Biobalance HealthCast, episode 250, Metformin, Old Drug with New Tricks. Biobalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of Biobalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. We constantly are looking for new elements of research, new ideas, new twists on how to understand the way medicine works so that you can help people because your goal as a specialist in the aging process is to help people find out how to live healthy lives for the entirety of their life so mm-hmm. that they're functional every day. They have the capacity to walk and stand and laugh and play. and They don't just go to a body storage facility and wait to die. Or spend their time in doctor's offices every single day they trying to find something to patch them up. I'd like to prevent that. I find those places to be so depressing. I was <laughs> vis- I took an elderly friend to the doctor the other day. And we were in this office and all of the people that were in there were elderly and obese and moaning and sighing and carefully, carefully, slowly moving. And I thought, if I had to work in this environment every day, I mean... God love those people who absolutely. do. Absolutely. They, 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 they have a who special... Have the capacity to welcome and encourage and help those individuals. They have a special gift. I find gift. it to be so oppressive and frightening for me <laughs> as I anticipate my own aging. And that's why when and, we visit our parents... Yeah. We, we, we see look. The we see our, our ourselves, and that and that really. I had yeah. I had seventeen years of a parent either sick in my home, right, or in a nursing home. Yes, St- seventeen years straight. They overlap. Yeah, one parent or the other. Yeah, and it was in law, and then two parents. Outlaw, then in-law. <laughs> it wasn't an outlaw. Yeah, <laughs> and so so to me, it was. A, a, a constant depression because you you see them they don't they don't either know who you are or they're angry at you because they don't remember that you came to see them yesterday or you know they're just they're not happy and I don't want to be that well and, and I don't want to see my so friends do that I, I or my patients a high energy delightful witty intelligent active old person and I'm like I want to be like that person when I get old well I have I had a 70 year old woman walk in my office. She's been on pellet therapy between Gino and me. She travels back and forth to um, to Arizona. So she's been on pellet therapy about mm, 15 years. She's 70 years old, and she doesn't even look 50. I mean, I would yeah. guess just by looking at her. When I looked at her, I, I know who she is, but then I looked at her chart to remember that she was 70. Yeah. And I kept looking at her going, that's amazing. And it was partially her hormones, but it's partially that she exercises every day and she eats properly and you know, she it's does a cluster of things, she always. does the work. You can't just go, Oh, I don't want to age, so I'm gonna take pellets and I'm gonna sit here and eat ding dongs and diet soda or regular soda, God forbid. But I mean oh, that doesn't work. You have to do the work too. You have to yeah. want to be well. But I promise you that if you do that work now, that's gonna save you all that work. Later, when you're going to doctor's visits and you're spending Medicare money or your own money on trying to stay alive, I don't want to just stay alive. I want to be healthy. I want to be active. I want to be going to the gym. I want to be able to go on a trip where I can hike and kayak. And I mean, I love those trips. I don't want to stop doing that. My wife and I try to walk at least three miles you're every day. You're great walkers. God, and, and you wear me out. So we, we average that three miles a day is... is Pretty much what we except shoot in San for. Diego, we had to walk twelve. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can muscle up and do it when you have to. Yeah. <laughs> but we have some friends who live down the street who are five to six years older than I am. I'm I'm sixty eight, uh, so they're early seventies. They can't walk five hundred yards, and I know that I know, and and I'm like, please don't let that be me. Let, you know, and and one injury. Mm-hmm. If you aren't, if you don't have good muscle mass and you haven't been taking care of yourself, one injury can end your active life Mm -hmm. after you're 65. Because if you don't have muscle mass and and you don't have good metabolism or you're obese, you can't drag yourself around because you have had a bad knee or you've had it fixed, but you can't get out of the wheelchair. So I I always talk about my 93 year old man who over about 10 years ago, I guess now, Mm -hmm. um, had a, had a hip operation and 
couldn't get out of a wheelchair and he was really upset. Well, he used to take care of all of his properties. Yeah, he has all these properties all, all over St. Louis and mm -hmm. and he was he was upset and actually he's the father of one of my nurse practitioners and she said, "Can I just give him pellets because I know he's in his 80s and he had prostate cancer, but he's willing to take the risk because he's going to die within a year if he's in that wheelchair." Right. So, I said I was like Fine, let's look at all the lab, everything, you know, made sure everything was okay. And I said, let's go. He, you know, he got out of the wheelchair. He's now, I mean, it's been years, 10 years. So he's now on ladders and, and taking care of all of his properties again. And he's happy and he's active. So the, this is what I want to see. Right. He did the work. Well, he, he's but healthy. you also do the work. And that's what I started to talk about. You, you do the research. You're constantly looking for information about how to use the tools that are in the box to help <laughs> people be better. Mm -hmm. And one of the tools in the box that you've been using for years for lots of people mm -hmm. for a variety of reasons, and we've done several podcasts on that tool, is the drug metformin. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an old established drug. It's to the point that it's generic. You can get mm -hmm. it anywhere in the world pretty cheaply. Mm -hmm. And metformin is classically thought of as a drug for uh, minimizing the impact of, of type 2 diabetes. Right. And not prevent, it's not approved by the FDA to prevent diabetes yet. Right. And they probably never will because it's generic. But it is approved for diabetes. Right. But now in the endocrine journal I read last month, they said not enough people use metformin to prevent diabetes. <laughs> and uh -oh. I'm like... Off label, right? So they're they're advising their doctors to use it, even though it, the FDA doesn't approve it for that for that use, right? But they don't disallow it. They don't say you. No, can't you can. Do any it doctor can use wrong that. Wrong in doing it. No, they they, just, they encourage their doctors to use it. Yeah. To pre so that they could decrease the number of people with diabetes. I mean, it's just every day there's more people with diabetes, and if you catch somebody who has high triglycerides, high blood sugar, a slightly elevated hemoglobin A1C, and you say, you're on the edge of the cliff, you're going to fall over and you're going to be right. a diabetic, and then you're going to, if you don't want to diet now, you're definitely going to have to diet then. So, so met, start now. <laughs> metformin is like putting a rope barrier up on the edge of the cliff. It's like it pulling, you back. I'm pulling them up with a rope. Like, uh -huh. okay, you're pulling you back from the edge. You yes. know, you got the yeah. rope tied around you and kind of that picture by giving them metformin and saying, here's a low carb diet. Here's the exercise you have to do. I mean, type two diabetes, I took care of pregnant women forever. I, I didn't even need medicine for them. I just put them on a treadmill every day. Treadmill for 20 minutes got their blood sugar down. Now that's young, healthy women who are pregnant, so it takes more work as we get older. But for for us to avoid diabetes, which is what metformin is supposed to be used for, um, or to prevent it, which it isn't approved for, we, we can use this medication and add exercise and diet, which won't work by themselves. Right. So then we can keep people from getting diabetes. They don't and get it. If, if they gain a little weight, we put them back on the metformin, and, and, and then they lose the weight, and they... Well, and sometimes if they have type 2 diabetes, but you can get them to exercise and lose weight and use metformin, mm -hmm. they can actually come back into a zone where they don't need insulin, they don't need other they medicines. They don't need anything. Uh, a lot of so, medicines can go away, but now they have a new use or a new off-label use for metformin, there's several of them, right. but the but the one that I thought it, that's why we call this stunning new tricks yeah. for an old drug. Right. But they found that taking metformin prevents breast cancer. Amazing, and we know that breast cancer risk is increased by obesity, mm -hmm. and we know that breast cancer risk is increased by insulin resistance, which is prediabetes. So now they've done the testing and they found that it decreases our risk of breast cancer. So not only can we not get diabetes, then by taking metformin, we can decrease our risk of getting a deadly disease. So, so you're saying it can help you avoid getting yes. breast cancer. What if you have breast cancer or have had breast it, cancer? It helps the treatment. It assists in the treatment for the breast cancer or prevents a recurrence. So, having said that, metformin has to be accompanied by a low-carbohydrate low <coughs> diet and exercise, and, but they won't do that just alone. It's hard to lose weight after you've gotten to that point. Right. So, it, it makes those two things work. 
Right. Di- you know, the diet and exercise. So the metformin prevents breast cancer by both lowering BMI and improving health, but also it has some other function that has to do with insulin resistance because insulin people who have insulin resistance have a higher rate of breast cancer. That's and, and, amazing. And breast cancer is where they found the most significant results early in this research, but they're also looking at it for the prevention or treatment of other cancers. Yeah, pancreatic cancer and a couple of others. Yeah. Uh, colon cancer, too. So some cancer doctors who are doing what you do every day, which is look at the toolbox to say, how can I find something that's going to help this person began to make the connections between the number of cancer patients that were diabetic. And they, they were discovering that in the treatment of the diabetes in this population, mm-hmm. statistical population, cancer improved too. Mm-hmm. And so they're trying to say, what's making this happen? And they try to isolate the variables. Mm-hmm. And the variable that they found that seemed to be surprising and helpful and beneficial was how often these people were taking metformin. So they're beginning to speculate in the literature of the research journals that perhaps more people ought to take metformin Mm -hmm. as a preventative for diabetes, Mm -hmm. but also perhaps more people ought to take metformin as a preventative for breast cancer, colon cancer, colon cancer, pancreatic cancer. Mm -hmm. So that's it's early days, early stages, Mm -hmm. but the data are beginning to accumulate and it's exciting. Just one drug. Just that one drug. Can do that's these already an amazing things. Old drug. And we know, we know. I mean, very few side effects, except if you eat too much carb, then you can get diarrhea. So it kind of tells you you're eating too much, too much carbohydrate. Mm-hmm. But other than that, you, your body usually gets used to it, and you don't have a lot of side effects to it. And so, uh, dosage-wise, most people take like one a day, two a day, three a day. Well, when we're starting out. We try to get people to uh, three, ex- for this purpose, extended release, because you want it to cover your whole day. You don't want it to cover a meal like you would for diabetes. So we use extended release. You can take all three or 1,500 milligrams extended okay. release at one meal, but we try to we work people up slowly so that their intestines don't get all in a, riled up. Because if you start getting diarrhea from the drug, you're going to back away stop. from the drug. And, and if you're being treated for cancer... It's a side effect of a lot of the different need. treatments you get, yeah. uh, and and they want to build your weight back up. Right. So that's that's a, and plus diarrhea in itself is just not healthy. Yeah. So we don't want to have that uh, that side effect. So we slowly bring people up one one five hundred milligram extended release at a meal, and if you take it without food, it isn't going to work. It may even just come out whole at so, the other so end. So when you so, say with a meal, if if I ate lunch and I forgot to take a metformin and can, 10 minutes later, still, 15 minutes later. You can later. still take it, but it won't work as well as if you take it a bite of food and then you take your metformin and then you eat the rest of your meal. Right. It works better there because it gets rid of some of your carbohydrate for so, you. So ideally, just as you begin the meal, you should take the pill. Right. Right. That's when it works the best. Okay. So, but we, you can take, if they're extended release and you're taking it for preventive purposes, you can take... Um, three of them at a time with food, Mm -hmm. and that will cover you for the whole day. Having said that, after people reach their goal weight, then I back them off to one a day or two a day, depending on their surface area or depending on whether they start gaining weight back. When I put them on one, then I might up them back to two. Some people don't need it. However, most people need to either go back on it periodically and if you're trying to prevent something you should just continue to take one a day well and it's not just the way another another issue that presents itself people take it and they continue to drink alcohol yeah that's with their meals or they have an evening cocktail or something the more you combine alcohol and metformin the less it works. you're going to lose weight, the less, less effective works. the metformin is. Mm-hmm. So it, part of the message that you have to hear is if you want to be serious about this in terms of preventing diabetes, preventing diabetes, uh, in terms of reducing cancer risk, in terms of maintaining a, a healthy weight, is you got to watch your alcohol consumption. You have to be reasonable. I mean, you, yes. I have patients that drink a bottle a night. I mean, that's crazy. They say, oh, I just have a really big glass. That's still a bottle. <laughs> 
I don't care. Drink fewer glasses of wine. Psychologically, yeah. I mean, there is a glass that holds an entire bottle of wine. That's crazy. And that's not healthy. I mean, a little bit of wine, that's what we're talking about when we're saying it helps your heart. We're not talking about more than a little glass of wine. Now, Matt Foreman can tolerate a little glass of wine. but And it usually should be dry. White's better than red, although red's better for your heart. Yeah. So not sweet. It's all about the chemistry set and, <laughs> and what are your skills for being a chemist. But one you know, the other thing that, that we've talked about before, but I want to put this together for the metformin. In case in case you didn't get freaked out over preventing breast cancer, colon cancer, pancreatic cancer, and diabetes, <laughs> then I'll then the other thing that metformin has been used for, and most of the research was initially done in Japan for Alzheimer's and dementia. And they found that Alzheimer's and dementia, they call it in Japan type 3 diabetes. Oh, wow. So it is because the plaque forms on your on your um, nerves, on your neurons, um, partially because you have insulin resistance. Mm. So Preventing insulin resistance by taking metformin prevents Alzheimer's. And 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 I'm, you know, one of the reasons people who have family history of, of people with Alzheimer's and dementia, and I have one parent that had something like that, and I have the gene for it, the APOE gene. I have one of the two genes, which isn't a fun thing to know, but useful. And so I'm more likely to get Alzheimer's. So, but you're suggesting then, if you take metformin, if you eat a healthy diet, if you live an active exercise-based life, and you don't drink too much, and if you replace your testosterone, because that also defers Alzheimer's. Sounds like a winner to me. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it takes some work, but aren't you worth it? Or those you love. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.